Welcome to God, Sex, and You, a daily discipleship podcast on healthy sexuality. Here's your host, Purity Pastor, Dustin Daniels. Well, today we begin a brand new trigger in the sex spiral, forgiven and free from pornography. This material is from uh, my new book coming out this summer by God's grace, and we are getting a preview of the 12 triggers of porn addiction. And if you want to start at the beginning of the series, all you have to do is start listening at show number 161. It's titled Just Married. Well, this particular trigger is one that we're all very familiar with. It's temptation. (laughs) Some of us are just like, oh yeah, I know about temptation. Well, this is an area to where many other books or programs actually start. They actually start dealing with addiction at this point. But as you've learned over the past several weeks, we've actually had a minimum of two opportunities to exit this spiral. The first one being our awareness, our vulnerability to our sin. And if we choose not to pray, if we choose not to flee or confess what's going on inside of us to a trusted friend, then we will inevitably, I promise you, if we don't pray, flee, or confess, we will go to straight to trigger number two, which is our unhealthy thoughts. It's our shame, which most of the time it's, it's subconscious. We don't even realize that we're making decisions based out of uh, past behavior. So this is where we have yet another opportunity to pray and flee and confess to exit this spiral. If we don't choose to do something different, we're going to end up at temptation. So so that's where we are today. My question, though, is do we really know what temptation is? In this podcast, we're going to learn three things. Well, hopefully we're going to learn more more than three. But the majors are this. Number one, whether whether or not temptation itself is a sin. Uh, Number two, how Jesus handled temptations. And number three, which is one of the coolest things that we'll learn, is one of the the Greek words for temptation and what the Greek word really truly means. So let's get started with today's lesson. It's titled, The Difference Between Test and Temptations. Father, tonight we are so grateful that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. So let us lay aside every single weight, every sin which clings so closely to us, and let us run with endurance the race that you have set before us, that we will indeed look to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. He despised our shame, and now he is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So I pray, Lord God, that we are listening, that we take the time to listen to you tonight. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. How many of you guys are familiar with a ministry called Young Life? Have you guys been up to the Young Life camp up in Williams? If you get, a, if you get an opportunity to go, well, you've been up there. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 It's a nice camp, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. And um, so God gave me the privilege to, to speak to 400 leaders over the weekend. And it was just a, a really cool young leaders. Like these are college age kids, right? And, um, you know, usually I'm, I'm looking at you guys. Uh, and, and, and when I go up there, I'm looking at, at old grumpy guys. And, and now I had these 20 year old. Uh, faces staring at me and uh, I I tell you this is I've spoken up there three times this past year Um, and this weekend was the first time that I was able to take Amy with me and it was just so cool to see in like in the second breakout session it was probably 70% women who wanted to know the topic was God, sex, and you, right? 
so God has me doing all these different talks on, so the radio show is called God, Sex, and Current Events, God, Sex, and You, God, Sex, and Your Church, you know, that, that kind of thing. But to see these women really want to understand what God says about sexuality and how they're the crown of creation, and for them to look into their eyes and, and teach them the word of God, and for these young people, after it's all said and done, right? Because usually when I go to a men's retreat, nobody comes up. Nobody wants to talk to me. <laughs> right? They really want to. They, they, don't, come they up. don't, right. <laughs> they, they don't, yeah, nobody wants to see me, right? Like, I walk into a grocery store and I see a couple people I know. They're like, I'm going to I'm gonna go uh, get my cereal down here. Um, but guys... It was just so cool that these young people, that they're hungering and thirsting for God's work because there's so much confusion in it. So pray for the young leaders, would you? I mean, just it's, it was really because they came up and they, number one, they thanked me, which was encouraging. They asked questions and they, they wanted to know what to do. Most of them were like, well, I've had sex and I'm doing, the, you know, and what do I do? And to teach them to what repentance looks like and to, to go and sin no more. And, and it just and I wanted to share that with you because I just found it really encouraging with the, the people who are in their, their late teens or their early 20s. And these people were all across the country. And so keep the, keep the, keep the, young, the young people in, in your prayers because um, it, gave me, it gave me hope that there is not, all is not lost when it comes to the, to the young folks. Let's review from last week. So last week we talked about trigger number two, our unhealthy thought life, right? We call this shame. This week we're going to be talking about trigger number three, which is the actual temptation. So last week we learned that there are, there are four self-stories. you got the strong person in the relationship. That, that means that you're, if I'm the strong person then you must be the weak person. That means you're the problem. You've got the weak person. So if I'm the weak person in the relationship, that means I'm the problem. The wounded person, I'm the result of what's been done to me. And then the godly person says, well, my holiness and my worthiness, my acts, that makes me, that depends on whether I've got a good day or a bad day. That's where my identity is. Dr. Patrick Carnes, he stated that there are four false belief statements when it comes to sexual sin. Number one, I'm a, ba I'm, I'm a bad and unworthy person. No one will love me as I am. My needs are never going to be met if I depend on others. And sex is my most important need. And once again, these things, as, as we go through this process, a lot of this stuff is just subconscious. We, we, have, to, we have to really, like, I would have never admitted for 20 years that sex is my most important need. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I would have told you to go take a hike. That's dumb. But see, my behavior proved it was true. My behavior proved that sex was my most important need. Why? Because of the amount of time I was looking at porn, the amount of time I was at the strip clubs, the amount of time I was chasing, the amount of time I was doing all these things. It was my behavior that proved those statements were true. Does that make sense? Because that's, that's really important to understand. Like, I, th this stuff doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me. Well, it, it may not until we actually get through the, the whole spiral. But at the end of the day, look at your behavior, which will line up to those, to those beliefs. Okay? So as we move into uh, temptation, this is trigger number three. If you look at the very first page in your binder there, you'll see the spiral itself. That very, very first, that very, very first page. So trigger number one, awareness. Once again, if we, we've got two options with every single one of these triggers. We can confess and flee. The awareness is the, the moment that I'm aware of what's going on. Oh, my gosh. I'm looking too long at someone in the, in the store. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm scrolling through a, a Facebook. Oh my gosh, there's a commercial I shouldn't be watching. Boom, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to flip the channel. And now we go to, to, to trigger number three, where a, this is where a lot of books start. 
It's temptation and acting out. And this is where uh, a lot of these guys spend a lot of time here. But as you learn this process, and it is a process to understand where you are in the cycle, um, and understanding where you are is important because that's how you exit the cycle, right? All right, so temptation is trigger number three. So we've had two opportunities to flee or confess. Temptation is, is, uh, is talked about in Matthew 4.1, if you guys want to turn there, Matthew 4.1. Is temptation a sin? Why not? You guys hear that? Jesus was tempted, and Jesus didn't sin, right? So the temptation is not the sin. Matthew 4.1. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the, wilderness, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Now, that Greek, that, the Greek word for tempted is parosmos. And that word is a neutral word, which means that it can be a testing for good or it can be a temptation for evil. It's a neutral word. It can mean one, one or the other. So from God's viewpoint, it can be a test, but from Satan's viewpoint, it can be a temptation. So in other words, God gives you the opportunity to prove who you are by a test. He wants you to prove that you are becoming a man of integrity. But from Satan's standpoint, demonic standpoint, it's the other way around. He wants to trip you up and prove that you can't get past this, that you're going to continue doing the same thing over and over and over again. Satan intends it for evil while God intends it for good. So the issue with being tempted is that you really can't see the difference until the, after the temptation or the test. What did you do with it? Because it's your choice, right? Um, the bottom line is that God allows these things to happen in our lives. If I pass the test, that, then, the, then the test proves that I'm learning how to be a person of sexual integrity. If I fail, then that's a temptation in which I was enticed by my own sin. And it's important to note that Jesus was always in conflict with people and Satan, and yet he never sinned. So not only was Jesus tempted in every single way, but he was tempted to the absolute highest form of the temptation. So let's say you've got a scale of temptation. One to ten, right? Now, Every time you're, you're tempted, do you sin? Does, does anybody, every time they're tempted or tested, do they sin? No. So that means it's a choice, right? So a lot of us will hear at two and three, this is, this is, where, this is where we may give in. But Jesus Christ not only passed three, four, five, but he was here at 9 and 10 to where it was the, the ultimate form of the, the temptation itself. Everybody understand that? So this is a, a progression that God wants you to experience. He wants you to, under, he wants you to get past 3 and 4. The thing is, is that most, most of us never get past 3, 4, and 5. We, keep, we, we, get, we get caught here for years and years and years. And we go, man, it feels like I'm, I've, I'm doing the same thing over and over and over, year after year. Well, it is. Because God continues to give you the same test, the same temptation from Satan's standpoint, and you've got to do something different to move here. And yeah, it gets hard. When you, get, when you get in through here, this is where you start to experience freedom. Everybody understand that? So this is, and we're going to get to some scripture here that will, that will show you that te testing and temptations must happen in your life for you to become free. It's the only way. 
Does that make sense? Any questions on this? That, G, that Jesus himself not only experienced temptation, he experienced the full weight of the temptation. And he was tempted and he never sinned. Did you catch that? It's by moving through the test or the temptation to where you experience freedom from pornography and freedom in Christ. We can't go around it. We have to go through it. Have you, have you ever wondered why life seems like a broken record? I mean, why do we keep doing the same things over and over and over again, especially when it comes to temptation? See, God loves us so much that he's going to provide an opportunity, opportunity after opportunity, do-over after do-over, it seems, until we learn how to trust in him. Have you ever noticed that? And trust in others as well as we, as we walk through these tests and these trials and these temptations. And believe it or not, we must experience the full weight of our tests and, and temptations, just like Jesus did. When we move through these tests and these temptations, being at levels 3, 4, and 5, and we start experiencing them at like 8, 9, and 10, man, this is how we grow. This is how we mature. This is how we change, right? And I want, I, I, I do, I, I really want to encourage you to stop playing defense here with this thing and start playing offense. And once you start playing offense, man, let me tell you, the whole game changes. It's like, how many excuses am I going to give myself by not putting uh, filtering software on my computers and my mobile devices, for example, right? I mean, that's, that's playing defense. Covenant eyes, accountability, and filtering software is playing offense. And, and you got to do both. When it comes to purity, you have to have a game plan for offense and defense. But covenant eyes, it will. It will protect you and your family. It will protect every computer, mobile device. I've been using it for years. It protects me. It protects my wife. It protects the purity ministry of seven places. So let me encourage you, uh, once again, to visit covenanteyes.com today. And when you do, you can receive a 30-day free trial when you put my full name in the promo box. Well, thank you so much for listening to God, Sex, and You. I'm your host, Dustin Daniels. And if you are in Phoenix, I want to invite you to our weekly community group. It's for men and women, husbands and wives, single, together, divorced. Everybody is welcome. And you're invited to listen to God with us every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. at Northern Hills Community Church. If you're a Twitter person, you can follow me on Twitter at Purity Pastor. You can rate the show on iTunes, and I would love to hear from you. Email me your questions, DustinDanielsRadio.com. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 4.20, The kingdom of God isn't just a lot of talk. It's living, living in God's power. And that power is the very name and the shed blood of Jesus Christ. I love you and look forward to our time again tomorrow.